Hey guys, we've got a knife change on a BC 1500 today. Just walk you through tools we're gonna to use real quick. We've got a torque wrench that'll go up to at least 210 foot-pounds, a pipe to gain leverage. Um, we've got a just a quart of 10W30 motor oil here. Uh, we use those to lubricate the bolts. I'll go over that a little bit later. Some acetone and a rag for cleaning. This is all the tools that you'll need. 24 millimeter, 16, a couple of extensions, and this is just a window scraper there for cleaning. And we've got a homemade tool. I'll show you how that's used in a few minutes as well. And a magnetic tray. Kind of keeps everything nice and tidy. Keeps you from dropping any bolts down in the machine. And then we've got a knife kit from Vermeer. Comes with a new set of bolts, which you need to change out each time you put a new set of knives on. And we've got a brand new set of knives there. And then lastly, we use a uh, three-quarter heavy impact from DeWalt here. The, ma the manual lays this out um, as well as the sticker. If you've still got yours on your machine, walks you through step-by-step -step how to do that. Uh, only thing I want to show you on this side of the machine is this is a locking pin, and we'll go over that shortly that will lock the drum into place as you're trying to take things apart in there so it doesn't move back and forth on you. We're gonna go through shear bar adjustment as well. So first off is we're gonna raise our cover up here, our drum and our knives are underneath that. I've already loosened these bolts. Just a reminder when you pull these bolts out, put them in your magnetic tray. I have dropped a bolt down in that drum and it's not fun to get out of there. So this is your drum, this is your knife. There's one that matches this on the opposite side, 180 degrees, three bolts. And there is a block down here. I'm not sure if you can tell that these threads actually go through the drum into a block. Um, I've never broken one of these. I've heard of guys who have. Usually it's over torquing um, or some other negligence. It's an extreme pain to get that out. So definitely don't want to over torque anything here. So we've got a homemade tool here. You can use a hole saw. I believe a one inch works as well. This is just something we fabbed up years ago and have kept it. Uh, these notches in here will kind of tear up this wood debris that's encased around your bolt heads here. Makes it a lot faster to get that material out of there instead of using a screwdriver. Just gonna rotate the drum, do the other side. Always be cautious of that knife, especially if you're just flipping instead of replacing. So for you guys who are new to chippers, the manual states that each time you change a set of knives, these bolts go in the trash and you put a new set of bolts in. So a new set of bolts is good for each side. So if I put a new one on today, this side will be sharp as well as this side. When we flip this over, I can reuse them once and then they go in the trash. Uh, the manual also says that center line to outside edge, two inch is minimum clearance. So as you have these sharpened over time, these will shrink. If you get below two inches, center to out, throw them away, get a new set on there. Uh, we're gonna talk about shear bar adjustment in a minute, but that shear bar can only be adjusted so far. And that's part of the reason that you don't want an extremely short knife. Plus, as you lose material, the knife becomes weaker. Just back these out. and you haven't used a breaker bar, make sure you do put that pin on the outside of the drum there. Stabilize it so you can get in here with two hands. So these are going to be trash now. Pull this old knife off. We'll measure that later to see if it's still good for sharpening. What I do is take my scraper, knock off all this excess material that's built up in here, tree sap, rust. Really try to get this flat. You can use a green wheel on an air tool. Um, possibly even a sander. I don't do that because I don't want to mar the steel. I found that this works best. We've had about four chippers over 10 years and I've never had a problem doing it this way. I just want to try to get as 
close to flat as I can to make good contact. Make sure there's no debris in there. So when I torque those bolts down, there's no gap between my, my knives and the deck of this drum. So we get the access material, take a little of that acetone, just apply that to a rag. It really gets that extra tree sap off. So we're gonna take our new knife. There is a little bit of uh, film on here from the factory to keep this from rusting. So I take my acetone and wipe that film off. And it doesn't matter if you go left or right on this because from the factory, it should be exact from center to outside edge on both sides. So we're gonna line up that new knife. Take our new bolts. In that bag, they do provide oil. Um, I don't use this just because it's not very much. Instead, what we're gonna do is take that quart of 5W30 or 1030, doesn't really matter which one. I like to dip mine. Gets most of the bolt covered. Drop them right down in there. I don't think you can get too much on there. Like I said, we've been doing it this way for years. I've never had one loosen up, never had one seize. The purpose with this is that by having oil between the threads, it keeps these bolts from seizing up since they're under such high pressure. I'm gonna run those down snug. Acetone to clean again. Grab our second new knife. Same thing, want to clean that film off, just that flat edge. So now that we've got that snugged up, we're gonna grab our breaker bar. Before we do that, I'm gonna show you this pin. I'm not sure if you can see that. So there's kind of a pipe welded on the outside of that drum. That red pin is gonna come in from the outside through that hole into that drum. Try to show you that here. It slips out. And now it's in there. Now it's going to keep our drum from rotating back and forth. Just a little bit of play there. So we're 
we'll take our 24 milliliter six inch extension. We're gonna adjust that torque wrench to 210 foot pounds. We're gonna crank these bad boys down. You don't have good leverage here. That's where the pipe comes in handy. Careful pulling your socket off, not to drop it in there. You're gonna pull the pin. Gonna rotate that drum and do the other side. Just repeat the process. Get to pull your pin out, store that away. I find it best to do this from the passenger side. There is a hydraulic tank on the other side of the machine. It makes it a little more cumbersome to get in there with your torque wrench. <clears throat> and then I always like to spin the drum to make sure it's free before I close this lid back up and everything sounds good there. Install the four 16 millimeter bolts. I don't know the torque spec on these, I just always snug them up. Plus, a little seems to be good. So just kind of run you guys through shear bar adjustment. Uh, on these BC-1500s, you do have a latch here that holds the hood down. There's one on each side of the machine. And then this hood will raise up. Underneath here is where your rollers are at. These springs will come off with one hand usually. And then your rollers will slide open. We'll do that on both sides. Um, sometimes you do get debris back in behind that roller. If you do, you may have to clear that out. If you can see inside here, I'm gonna open this other roller up to give you a little better view. shear bar is this plate right here so as your knife comes around you can see that gap right there that determines the thickness of the chip that you're going to get 
and the consistency of it. And so each time you put a new set of knives on or you flip them, you're supposed to adjust that shear bar down to one eighth of an inch. I'll show you the tool that comes with the machine. You can use a flat piece of steel to gauge that. Um, underneath the machine, there's a trap door. There's three bolts down there. You loosen those and you can slide this bar back and forth to get that adjustment. Uh, big thing is, obviously you don't want your knife hitting that because you're gonna damage the knife or some other material. And you don't want too big of a gap because the machine's gonna have to work extra hard producing a larger chip. So I'll show you that trap door under the machine. And so there's the trap door. It's got four bolts in it. That opens up. And then there's three or four bolts in there. I can't remember to adjust that shear bar, close that back up. Just make sure you're wearing eye protection of some kind. There's always debris in there. And then back up to your in-feed rollers. Um, it's always a good idea to check when you've got this open that you don't have too much debris built up in here. Um, if this gets too full of debris, can cause these motors to overheat. We also like to clean out the tracks with a pressure washer. Um, and then the manual says you need to spray a lubricant where these neoprene, or these piece of plastic sliders are at. <clears throat> Keeps this from seizing up. Also kind of helps keep the trash out and allows these rollers to move more freely. Once you've got all that debris out, you can close these back up. They're kind of heavy. Springs back in. Shut the hood and you're ready to go. Rollers are closed back up. Make sure our pan's back in place so we don't lose that. So once we've got our lid closed, our springs are back on, we've relatched, we've confirmed we got all the bolts in here, our red pins pulled out, um, and that we're clear of all tools. I like to fire the machine up just to make sure that everything functions properly. Nothing worse than getting into the field, finding out that you missed a step uh, or you've got a tool in the machine. Uh, last thing we do is um, I keep a list on here of intervals for service. So knives, oil, air filter, etc. So when a guy's operating, he can quickly check the hour meter and see where we're at on the sheet to see if we have scheduled maintenance we need to do. And we take care of that on a Friday. Try not to let your maintenance get too far out. And then last item was that shear bar. I told you I would show you. We keep ours in here. And this is just a flat bar. Comes with the machine. I believe it's an eighth inch thick. Um, there's kind of a diagram on there that shows you how to put that between the knives and the shear bar to get your correct adjustment at the right angle. Make sure you hang on to that. Again, if you've lost it or you don't have it, just go to the hardware store. You can grab a small two-foot piece of steel. Hit me up if you've got questions or comments. I'll do what I can to help you.